You must be decent at beating defenders if you can break one of Neymar's dribbling records in France, no? At 16 years old, Jeremy Doku was asked by his manager about what he dreams about in football. Did he tell his manager that he wanted to score a ton of goals, win silverware, the Ballon d'Or? No. His answer? That he wants to break their souls, essentially. That's very count of him. Since great fear in you. By his own admission, that probably wasn't the most ambitious answer he could have given his coach, but by sticking to his own fantasy of what the perfect footballing outcomes would be for him, he's found his way to the defending European champions at the age of 21, with regular praise from a manager who will undoubtedly go down as amongst the best of all time. It's safe to say that things have worked out for Doku so far. Beyond Rhys James doing better than anyone else to contain him in a recent match, there hasn't been a Premier League defender that Doku hasn't gotten the better of. If you throw Anthony in there as well, not a defender of course, then he certainly has had some fun in the Premier League so far, and he's only 556 minutes in. He's been very, very productive in that time, both when it comes to creating nightmares or killing defenders, as he said, as well as goal contributions. And this is just the start. Hey everyone, I appreciate you stopping by. Just thought it would be polite to introduce myself to those who are new here. I'm Adrian, the man behind Roboto TV. And if you find yourself enjoying this video, then consider subscribing for more videos just like this one. All right, let's go. For most, we began hearing about Jeremy Doku as an outside shot for Belgium's Euro 2020 side, as perhaps the greatest representative of the new generation that would take the reins from Belgium's aging at the time, but past due in the present golden generation. As the original Euro 2020 tournament was postponed by a year, that will have helped him to solidify his place further. As mentioned, he was an outside shot for the originally planned starting date in June of 2020, as he was excelling domestically in Belgium at the time, but was a bona fide must have for Belgium following the summer of 2020. Doku was a near instant hit for Roberto Martinez, as Doku made his senior debut for the Red Devils at just 18, playing against Denmark as a substitute. In the next match against Iceland, he scored his first goal for the senior national side, and would go on to become a regular in Martinez's squad, including making the Euro 2020 squad and featuring prominently at just 18 years old. But attention at a young age has been normal in Doku's life. Born on May 27, 2002 in Antwerp, Belgium, Jeremy Doku grew up in a Borgerhut with his family, including his older brother named Jefferson and two younger sisters. Jefferson Doku was on the books of Anderlecht as well, with a playing style that, at least from videos that have surfaced recently, resembles that of his younger brother, filled with trickery, flicks, and tricks. Unfortunately, he had to give up the dream of a playing career due to numerous injuries at a young age, but he operates as Jeremy Doku's agent now, helping him with his most recent move to City. More on that later, of course. Jeremy played football from a very, very young age, joining Olympic Dürn first at the age of five before switching to Tubantia Borgerhout. That only lasted a couple of years before legendary Belgian club Beerschot came calling for the then seven-year-old. Guess what? He didn't stay long with Beerschot either, as the local big dogs came calling. And at 10 years old, Jeremy joined their youth setup. He began making a name for himself at the club for, well, all of the things that you know and love Doku for. His ability to turn any given defender inside out, and the joy that he plays with down the left or right flank. So much so, in fact, that he even nearly joined Liverpool at the age of 15. With Lazar Markovic joining Anderlecht on loan from Liverpool in 2018, Liverpool was given permission to speak to Jeremy Doku about potentially joining them. But according to reports out of Belgium, Doku, with the guidance of his family, decided against taking that massive step at such a young age and instead signed a professional contract with Anderlecht. Smart man. Too many players have lost themselves by trying to fast track their career from such a young age. And wouldn't you know it, months later, Jeremy Doku would get his professional debut with Anderlecht on November 25th, 2018, at just 16 years and 182 days old. Surprisingly, that was only good for the title of the seventh youngest player to make their professional debut for Anderlecht at the time. A certain Romelu Lukaku was on that list ahead of him, second behind Nee Lamptey, who made his debut in 1990 for Anderlecht when he was just 15. Anyway, Doku made a total of five Jupiler Pro League appearances for the 2018-19 season, but would begin to excel during the 2019-20 season, where he would become a starter during the latter half of the season and gain a ton of interest from abroad. How many times can I say season in a minute? 
At just 18 years of age, at the beginning of the 2020-21 season, Doku signed with Stade René for 26 million euros, becoming the club's record signing. It took some time for Doku to find his feet and get back to his most dangerous best. He appeared in every single Champions League match for Stade René that season, but around the midway point of the season, 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 we began to see Doku really begin to shine for Les Rouges Noirs. It took some time for him to score his first goal, which came in a 3-1 victory away to FC Metz. But in that same match, he also received a straight red card for the first time in his career. But no bother. Upon returning after his suspension, he scored. As Doku was finding himself well. In May of 2021, Doku had 12 successful dribbles while playing against Bordeaux, beating Neymar's previous record of 11 successful dribbles in a single Ligue 1 match. That same season, his first season in France, of the players who made the top 10 in Ligue 1 for dribbles attempted, only Florian Tovin had a better success percentage than Doku, who had only just turned 19 in May of 2021. And so that summer, it was safe to say that Doku was in good form and worthy of selection for Belgium's Euro 2020 squad. Helping them to their quarterfinals run, Doku started two matches, including their quarterfinals exit at the hands of Italy, the champions, in which he won the penalty that Lukaku converted. But things would get considerably more difficult for him in his second season at Stade René. Doku will have come into the season expecting to dominate following his first dry run during the 2020-21 season. However, the 21-22 season would be completely rocked by injuries, leading to Doku playing in just 698 minutes across 18 appearances in all competitions. Doku has spoken of the impact that had on him both physically and mentally, as he spoke to Eleven Sports, saying, quote, Being out for so long, I wasn't prepared for that. Seeing your mates on the pitch and not being able to participate yourself was very difficult, especially as it was several injuries in a row. I had to be mentally strong, otherwise it was difficult to come out of that period stronger. He certainly did bounce back much stronger, much, much stronger during the 22-23 season. Critics of his game pointed to how Doku would sometimes lack an end product. There were to be no questions when it came to his ability to beat a man or two or three in quick succession, no questions about how useful his speed could be in transition, or how in drawing in defenders, he frees up space for his teammates to run into. There were absolutely no questions asked of that aspect of his game. But there's, of course, room for improvement for the youngster. During the 22-23 season, Doku evolved a little bit. He still would leave a trail of defenders behind him, and in fact, he was still the most aggressive dribbler in Europe. Just look at this visual from the Athletics' Ahmed Walid. As you can see here, the y-axis is the success rate for any given player's take-ons, while the x-axis looks at their attempted take-ons per 90. Doku ranks higher than everyone when it comes to the sheer amount of take-ons per 90, higher than Venetia, St. Maximin, etc. And when it comes to the success rate, also very high, with Kengen Lee, now of PSG, with the highest success rate, but very low amount of take-ons per 90. Doku has both. He's the most relentless dribbler in Europe, as the graphic says. And so during that final season with Stade René, Doku utilized his supreme dribbling to perfection. We'll go over his style in a moment, of course. And his great performances for his club led to him solidifying his place in the national team as well. He had a slow start to the season, as he was still getting over his previous injuries, and was re-injured a few times. But once he was healthy, the latter half of the season he was incredible, helping Stade René jump ahead from 6th to 4th in the table and qualify for the Europa League. Over in Manchester, they had just won the treble. <laughs> And a few of their players who had been around the club for some time that were either moving on to new challenges or seeking more playing time were moved on. One of those individuals who moved was Riyad Mahrez. Many thought that perhaps Cole Palmer would seize the opportunity as he's yet another player that can play on either flank or through the middle if need be. But as you know, Palmer left City as well, choosing to try his luck at Chelsea as they have been continuously revamping their squad and there was an opportunity to become a central figure in Pochettino's side. With two wingers out, Manchester City took their time in the market but eventually identified Jeremy Doku as the man to bring into the defending champions fold for around 55 and a half million pounds. A great return on investment for Stade René. His ability with the ball to beat his man was never in question, but the final ball that he played and his decision-making definitely was. So, what did Guardiola do with this raw talent? Yeah. Now, what's made Doku such a difficult proposition for defenders? How is it that he 
consistently sends defenders for a hot dog for fun, even ending matches with 100% successful take on rates at times? What's his dribbling style? I'd say that the two biggest things when it comes to Doku's ability with a ball at his feet is how he rapidly accelerates and decelerates, as well as his incredible ball control. Pair those two things together and it's going to be difficult to defend. Imagine you're up against a guy who is faster than you at his top speed, as well as in the first few yards of acceleration, you can't touch him. He can stop on a dime and the ball sticks to his foot like Velcro. You're going to be all over the place. When you couple his acceleration with the body feints that he throws into his game, it becomes obvious very quickly why he's such an effective dribbler. Get close to him and try to smother him and he'll send you one way with a shift of his hips only to use his acceleration to beat you in the opposite direction. So when you get too close, he'll burn you. Your next thought may be to stand off of him a bit, but in doing so, you're giving room to an absolutely rapid attacker who can change direction on a dime or simply knock the ball past you and collect it on the other side. We'll get to the exception in the moment, but most defenders in England, and Leipzig, they learned as well, have had a very, very difficult time dealing with Doku for all of the reasons that we just mentioned. And that's even without mentioning how his speed makes him a looming threat that opposing sides must account for whenever they push forward. In Doku, City have an option that differs from that of Bernardo or Grealish on the wing. Both brilliant players in their own right, both capable of running circles around their defenders or getting out of tight areas with their trickery, but lacking the pace that Doku has and making for a very different quandary for opposition defenses to worry about when he is brought on. One player who did indeed mark Doku almost completely out of the game was Reese James of Chelsea. And man, this just served as a reminder of how good James is and how frustrating it must be not only for their fans, but for himself to constantly be sidelined by injury because when he's healthy and in form, he's one of the best defenders in the world in my opinion, for his position. But anyway, utilizing his own strength and speed, James was able to stay close to Doku. He didn't bite early on any tackles, and with the help of Cole Palmer to often double up on Doku, his threat was neutralized. I guess that's also a compliment to Doku in that it took a world-class defender and some help from his teammate to take you out of the game, right? But we'll see what happens next they meet. Perhaps it was a one-off and Doku will get the better of James should they go face-to-face -face again at the Etihad next time, where Doku at the Etihad has ruled supreme over and over again. Or perhaps this is the new version of Cristiano Ronaldo versus Ashley Cole. Ronaldo at United in his prime was one of, if not the best dribblers in the world, skating past players at ease until he would meet Ashley Cole and things would get much, much more difficult for him against the English fullback, both for club and country. They had some epic battles, those two. Anyway, getting the better of your marker and being a threat on the counter is great, but as mentioned before, there were always questions about Doku's final ball and his decision making, and that's where Guardiola steps in. Of course, it's funny to say that could have been any questions of him, and then you see him get five goal contributions in City 6-1 win over Bournemouth. Guardiola has spoken openly about how he has been so, so impressed by Doku. More than you believe. Impressed not only by his ridiculous ability, I mean, Guardiola spoke of how they had a 1v1 competition in training with Kyle Walker acting as the defender against everyone. And of course, Doku won that challenge. Of course, you would bet on the guy who was used to playing in tight spaces from when he was playing on the streets with his friends to the limited room defenders have given him at the top level. That part isn't surprising that he won the competition, but how a player of his ilk fits into City's possession and passing heavy approach is impressive. As Guardiola said, quote, what surprised me the most is how clever he is when he has to take a decision. It's really good. He applies feedback immediately. He understands the game really well. I don't want to change how he is. Every game he has played, he has played well, especially here at home. Guardiola then spoke of how Doku's debut wasn't too fantastic, but he reminded the young Belgian that he was at City for a reason. Quote, I saw him shy and we talked about that. I said to him, why are you here? Why did Manchester City decide to invest in you? For your skills. What are your skills? Dribble? Yeah. Aggressive? Yeah. You've done it all your life? Yeah. So do it. You are a winger. You are close to the box. We'll do all the process so when you have the ball, it's one against one. And if it's one against two or three, it depends on you. If you are confident enough to go one against two or one against three, if you're able to do it, then do it. Otherwise, we have one or two men free. And it's that decision making that has really impressed me. 
And like I said in the intro, we're just 556 minutes into his Man City career and he's still just 21 years old. We're in the early stages of his development under Guardiola, where his decision making and pass execution will continue to improve and catch up to the rest of his game. Now, Think back to the anecdote from the beginning of this video, a 16 year old Jeremy Doku telling his manager at the time that his dream in football was ultimately to be a menace. He's used that as a starting point or a springboard and by applying the feedback he's been given from his managers over the years, he's molded himself into a classic winger in some respects in that he lives off of beating a defender. But he can offer so, so much more than just a few successful take-ons to get the crowd off of their seats. Under Guardiola, should he continue on this trajectory, the potential of Doku to be a well-rounded, dominant wing player with a superb output is very, very high. About as high as the chance of insomnia for those that share a flank with him, just as he dreamed it. Thanks for watching this video, guys, and be sure to drop a like if you liked it. Hey, subscribing is also appreciated and free, so do that and all of the other things if you enjoyed this one and want some more from me here. Other than that, I'm Adrian. Thanks once again for sticking around this long, and be well. Ciao.